My name is Kyle and welcome to another episode of Frame by Frame, a series dedicated to the craft of filmmaking. Now by the time this video goes live, it will have been almost 20 years since my mom cringed at this line. Hey, why don't you stop dressing me up like a mailman and making me dance for you while you go and smoke crack in your bedroom and have sex with some guy I don't even know on my dad's bed. My brother and I couldn't help but laugh or shock because South Park was a show that didn't give a f a sh or a god who would offend it. It had courage and fart jokes. In two decades, South Park has shifted from farce to satire, from an AB plot structure to single plot episodes. But starting in season 19, South Park became a radically different show, shifting from episodic to serialized storytelling, a decision that echoes a quiet but massive evolution in the television industry. But before we talk about what that evolution is, we need to understand the difference between episodic and serialized TV. Episodic shows tell stories that usually span an episode or two. The conflict has to be resolved within this time frame, and there is little to no continuity between episodes. Which means when Kenny died, and died, and died again, He could just reappear the next episode without question. Serialized shows, however, tell one story that spans the entire series. The central conflict is dragged out from one episode to the next, which demands continuity between stories. Each episode usually starts with a recap to orient the viewer and ends with a cliffhanger to keep them watching. Examples of serialized comedies include Gravity Falls, the increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margret, and Silicon Valley. I'm gonna go find some hoes to prioritize behind you. Are you trying to say bros before hoes? It's sexist, but it's about friendship. Now, South Park used to be an episodic show. Each narrative, traditionally contained one episode, was told using an A-B story structure. Take season four's Fat Camp episode, for example. In the A plot, Cartman is sent to Fat Camp. In the B plot, Kenny gets his own TV show called The Crazy Kenny Show. Both plots eventually intersect and resolve by the episode's end, albeit with two kids suffocating inside of a woman's uterus. Who was that? But sure, there were minor tweaks to this equation. Trey Parker favored single plots over this A-B story structure after the success of season five, Scott Tennerman Must Die. The occasional two or three part episode broke this format as well. Overall though, that was episodic South Park with the humor parceled out at about five jokes per minute. Now bite it off, bite it off the wiener, get pony. Oh no, pony, he'll like that. That was until season 19, when South Park decided to do the unthinkable. Buckle up, buckaroo. Well, that. And it became serialized. Starting in season 19 and continuing now into season 20, South Park follows just one story, period. There's continuity not just between episodes, but seasons. So how has this choice changed the DNA of your standard South Park episode? Well, first, each episode's plot has to further the main story. Second, episodes tend not to end on moralizing monologues cushioned with a punchline like they used to. Instead, episodes now end as most serialized episodes do, with cliffhangers. I might be able to figure out the source of who told you last night. And everyone back inside. If this girl really is that smart and funny, we might have another shot here. Third, South Park's average jokes per minute has dropped. Slightly. The reason for this is the same reason why there are so few serialized comedies that work. You see, TV comedies have to maintain a high joke output. It's the norm, you're used to it, and if they don't do it, something's gonna seem a little bit off. Now by high, I'm talking five to seven jokes per minute. So if one script page equals one minute of screen time, that means on South Park, Trey Parker and the writers used to cram in about five jokes per page. Don't forget though that Trey Parker and Matt Stone are telling a much larger story now, which requires more more exposition. This extra information eats up the page, leaving less room for jokes, an inevitable dilemma that kills most serialized comedies. But if South Park averaged five jokes per minute in its episodic days, how many is it averaging now? Surprisingly, not much less. I calculated this season's output to be 4.58 jokes per minute, only 0.42 less than before. Not a big drop, especially since Trey and Matt liven up the added exposition with absurd voice acting, which for them is nothing new. They took our jobs! They took our jobs! They took our jobs! So we know how South Park's changed, but do we know why? Sure, no one wants to do the same job, the same person, or the same shtick for 20 years. It gets old. 
In South Park's case, though, I don't think it's that simple. You see, until recently, episodic shows were favored by networks. There's two reasons why. The first is that episodic shows have higher viewer adoption rates. They're just easier to get into. The second is that episodic shows are better suited for TV's afterlife, reruns. You don't need prior knowledge of an episodic show to enjoy or understand it. And since reruns are shown out of order, episodic shows are uniquely suited for syndication. That all changed, though, with the advent of DVR and streaming services like Netflix. Now viewers choose how and when they watch a show, which makes it easier for them to appreciate the complicated storytelling of a show like Breaking Bad or the self-referential humor of a show like Arrested Development. South Park is moving towards serialization for the same reason. The format isn't just more accessible due to the advent of streaming. It presents new storytelling opportunities. Of course, that means the show has to find fundamentally change, requiring more exposition, cliffhanger endings, and the burden of continuity. Serialization may also kill South Park's ability to make timely satire. Who knows? My opinion? Well, I think the key to South Park's continued success is that it just remains the heartfelt, inclusive show we all know and love. He was a good friend, and I'll miss him. He was very brave. He risked his life so the Mephesto could live. Yeah, and now he's a freezy pad. Do you think if we hit him with a shovel, he'd shatter? I don't know. Let's find out. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and make sure to subscribe to this channel, Film Theory, for more fantastic film-related content. If you'd like to check out more Frame by Frame, click the frame to the left to watch an episode on Doctor Strange. Or if you'd like to check out a Film Theory episode on Rick and Morty, click the frame to the right. And until next time, my name is Kyle, and this has been Frame by Frame.